What's up guys, the snowman here, Grand Slam time again. We've got the 2022 French Open just around the corner now. In this video, I'll break down the men's draw, talk about the uh, chances of all the favorites heading into this tournament. Please check out my women's Roland Garros preview too, but for right now, let's analyze this men's draw, discuss the biggest storylines as we head into Paris. And no Matteo Berrettini, Roberto Bautista Agu, or Gael Monfils this French Open, but some huge storylines to discuss as we pull up the first quarter of this men's draw. Novak Djokovic gunning for major number 21, which would equal Nadal at the top. We've got three men who could finish this tournament as the number one player in the world, Djokovic, Daniil Medvedev, or Alexander Zverev. It's also the the first major since the 2002 French Open where Feliciano Lopez failed to qualify for the main draw. That ends his all-time streak of 79 consecutive major appearances. But uh, in terms of the draw, really the big question that everybody was waiting on was where will Nadal and Carlos Alcaraz fall? Which top four seed will have the unfortunate task of going through uh, one of them because they, along with Djokovic, are the joint three favorites. And bad news for all three of those guys. They all end up in the top half of the draw. And Djokovic and Nadal projected to meet in the quarterfinals. An insanely lopsided draw, just like we saw a few weeks ago in Madrid. I imagine both of those all-time greats are not very thrilled with how difficult their potential paths will be. As far as world number one, Novak Djokovic is concerned. He's aiming for the triple career Grand Slam. Uh, he obviously would love to defend his title in Paris. That sensational run last year coming down from two sets behind against Musetti. The epic win over Nadal and another rabbit out of the hat performance in the final against Stefanos Tsitsipas. Some good news for Djokovic fans. He basically looks like himself again. Uh, wasn't the smoothest first couple months of the season, but he's played himself into match shape. I won the title in Rome last week, a tournament he's dominated over the years. That was his 38th Masters 1000 level trophy, extending his lead over Nadal and his 36 titles. Uh, and it doesn't seem like the most daunting first week of opponents for the Serbian, although he may face his ex-head coach Marian Vida in round two. Vida now coaching Alex Mulkin. Some fun first round matchups between the uh, eight seed Grigor Dimitrov against Marcos Giron. Both made headlines in Rome. Dimitrov for having match points and nearly upsetting Tsitsipas before faltering in the clutch moments. And then Giron had the Italian crowd eating out of the palm of his hands as he took down the 10 seed in this section, Diego Schwartzman. Number nine, Felix Auger Aliassime playing really well at the moment. Nice to see Stan Wawrinka back in the fold. He just picked up his first win in 17 months against Riley Opelka in Rome. Backed it up by defeating Laszlo Gera before surrendering to Djokovic. And sign me up for Stan versus Rafa in the second Second round, their all-time head-to-head is 19 to 3, 8 to 1 on clay in favor of the Spaniard. Nadal, the five seed for this year. We know Rafa's the king of clay. We know he's got like 13 of these French Open trophies at his home in Mallorca. We know he's only ever lost three singles matches at the French Open. However, what we don't know is how will the foot hold up? The injury that's hindered the Spaniard most of his career really flared up in Rome versus Denis Shapovalov. He could barely finish that quarterfinal match, was limping quite heavily. Uh, apparently, he has looked much better in practice this week, so I'm hoping for the best for Rafa. Again, though, just a brutal draw for both Nadal and Djokovic. This is the last thing both of them wanted to see. Uh, at least for us fans, we're more likely to get that rematch from last year's Roland Garros. The only downside is that it would be in the quarterfinals. Hopefully, both men stay healthy and uh, the best player wins. Moving on to the second quarter, not quite as strong as the first section, but still more loaded than a typical Grand Slam quarter. Number three, Alexander. Zverev has a chance to be the world number one after this tournament, despite the fact that he still never defeated a top 10 player in a major. Also, Zverev's second serve continues to be a major flaw in his game. 47% of second serve points won this year. That's 70th best in the ATP, worst in the top 20. Overall, though, he has had a very consistent clay court season. Number 25, Davidovich Fokina could be tricky in the third round, uh, but it's a pretty manageable draw to the quarters for Zverev. The 13 seed Taylor Fritz, not really known for his clay court prowess, uh, nor is double specialist John Isner. Isner up to 20 in the doubles rankings, coming off a final in Rome. Uh, that was with his fun sized teammate Diego Schwartzman. Uh, the real adversity for Zverev, though, might wait until the quarterfinals because at the bottom you can see number six. Carlos Alcaraz, and I haven't had a chance to talk about Alcaraz since his triumph in Madrid where he knocked off Zverev in the final before slaying Djokovic and Nadal back-to-back. 
only the 12th man ever to beat Novak and Rafa at the same tournament. And of those 12 men, Alcaraz easily the youngest to do so, having just turned 19 years of age. He's the first man ever to defeat them both in the same tournament on clay and the only teenager to ever beat Nadal on clay. Rafa was 20-0 and in that statistical category. Seven straight wins against top 10 opposition from Miami to Madrid. He's beaten Tsitsipas twice, Hercatch, Rude, Nadal, Djokovic, and Zverev. And I know best of five at the majors is a completely different beast, but Alcaraz seems built for it uh, physically, mentally, emotionally. His odds deserve to be right up there with Nadal and Djokovic to win this tournament. And he just beat Zverev 6-3, 6-1 in Madrid. So I say he's the healthy favorite in quarter number two. Also uh, want to mention, watch out for a two-time French Open finalist Dominic Team lurking in this quarter. Hasn't been able to shake off the rust yet. Still doesn't seem 100% confident in his surgically repaired wrist, but I'm hoping for a good shot showing uh, this fortnight from the Austrian. In quarter number three, Stefano Tsitsipas, easily the biggest winner from this draw. The four seed at the bottom will be thanking his lucky stars. He avoids the top three players in his half. will only have to potentially face one of Djokovic, Nadal, and Alcaraz, and that would be in the final. I think the stage is set for him to make a run back to the final. Uh, the Greek currently leading the tour in match wins this season. Deep runs in all four main clay events this spring. Defended his title in Monte Carlo. Uh, Lorenzo Musetti, not an ideal first-round opponent. He's a guy who made the fourth round of Roland Garros last year. Gave Djokovic some real fits, but Steph is 2-0 head-to-head against him. Uh, that'll be a battle of uh, beautiful one-handed backhands. Again, I think Sitsipas will sign up for this draw every day of the week, though, and twice on Sundays. Number 14, Denis Shapovalov, the other major seed in this mini section. Uh, Shapo with a tough round one opponent, too. Holger Rune, two young, exciting players. Uh, for some reason, I feel like that could be a marathon five setter. Same potentially for uh, Gaston and number 19, Alex de Mineur. Then in the upper part of section three, Hubie Hercotch nearby. Top of your screen, number eight, Casper Rude coming off a semifinal showing in Rome. Uh, so solid in that win over Shapo. Dennis had set points in both sets, but Rude showing off the ability to stay composed and just play within himself. I love how his game has progressed. Unfortunately for uh, Joe Wilfred Sanga in his final French Open that he starts off against Rude, but that'll be an emotional match. I'm sure the crowd will be charged up and ready to help Sanga in any way possible. And also a dangerous floater in this section, David Goffin, playing his best tennis in years lately. Almost took out Rafa in Madrid. The Belgian still only 31 years of age. He'll definitely feel like he uh, still has plenty left in the tank. Finally, we arrive at the land of opportunity, section number four. And this is where we could see some more surprises. Maybe an unseated player catch fire and go on a Cinderella run. Uh, world number two, Daniel Medvedev, sits at the bottom. But we know that clay is not his favorite surface. He's been very upfront about that. Yes, he made the quarters in Paris last season, but before that, not a single match victory at Roland Garros. He's also been out for a couple months with an injury, just returned a couple days ago in Geneva, but lost to Richard Gasquet, so current form mixed with overall clay form doesn't necessarily bode well for the Russian. It's worth noting that if Medvedev makes the final, then it doesn't matter what Djokovic or Zverev do. Medvedev will reclaim that number one ranking, but he does have a fellow Russian to worry about, number seven, Andrei Rublev at the top. Personally, I think the 11 seed Yannick Sinner is the favorite to make it out of this quarter and play Sitsipas in the semifinals. Uh, Sinner has played well at the French Open in the past. He's also been so clutch this year. 10 and 2 is his record in tie breaks, 9 and 1 in deciding sets. And Roland Garros has been his best major. Sinner, that is, uh, in two appearances, quarters and round of 16. He's probably been hearing nothing but praise for his young contemporary Carlos Alcaraz over the past few months, but I see the 20 year old Sinner make making a statement with his game over the next couple of weeks, kind of reminding people about him. He's a guy who can absolutely win multiple majors throughout his career, and I think it starts with a semifinal run right now. Overall, difficult to pick a winner with the uh, logjam up in the top half uh, for this tournament. If Rafa's healthy, I'm going with him, but because of the question marks with his foot, I've got Djokovic just a hair in front of uh, he and Alcaraz. Those are by far the big three names to watch out overall at this French Open. Thank you so much for watching my men's Roland Garros preview. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think about my uh, analysis. Who do you have winning the big French Open this year? Please check out my women's Roland Garros preview as well. And uh, like and subscribe for more tennis content and preview videos. Thanks a lot. Cheers.